Okay, we will start uh, with the webinar. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Ushko Mori. I'm head of marketing at Weiler Abrasives uh, EMEA. Uh, I would like to welcome you all on Weiler Wednesday webinar in the EMEA region. Uh, today, my colleague Doris Vrechko, who is our product manager in metal fabrication, will lead us through troubleshooting, uh, cutting and grinding solutions. Uh, the webinar will last around 30 minutes and it's being recorded, so we will publish the video on our web page and you are free to use it whenever uh, you like. Yeah. So now we're already very uh, well familiar with the uh, Zoom, uh, right? But uh, nevertheless, for the new attendees, we will shortly explain uh, Zoom tips. So in the bottom of the screen, you can find some icons. Uh, all participants have been muted. This is just to prevent uh, any background noise. Uh, uh, we will use a few additional functions throughout the webinar. The first is the chat function. We will use it on about halfway, where we will give you an opportunity to win a present. And we kindly ask you, um, so the quickest uh, respond in the chat function uh, will win a present. Uh, the next function is questions and answers. You can, sub you can submit questions at any time throughout the webinar. We are uh, looking at uh, the questions. But uh, as I mentioned, we will do them at the end. So you are welcome to stay. Uh, and the last functions we will use are polls. So when you see a poll question pop up on your screen, we encourage you to participate by entering your uh, answer. So uh, we have noticed in previous webinars, some are trying to raise hand. Uh, please note that this item is not active. So if you have any comment or a question, please use uh, questions and answer icon. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to use this opportunity and um, also invite you to visit our website, which offers a full range of information about our solutions, products, and uh, about the Weiler Abrasives company. So welcome to visit us at weilerabrasives.com, as well as uh, on our social media, LinkedIn, and YouTube channel to track our regular posts. Um, and next, I would like to also uh, inform you about our next webinar on, the, on next Wednesday, on 22nd of July, at the same time when we will talk um, with Branko Chas uh, about selecting the right brush for your application. You can expect an invitation in your inbox and are warmly invited to join. Um, I think we covered everything uh, regarding the introduction, and I think we can start. So I invite Doris to take over uh, the stage. Okay, thank you, Urshka. Uh, hello, everybody, and thanks for joining. Uh, today we will talk about troubleshooting in cutting and grinding. So what to do when the problems occur? Troubleshooting is a systematic approach to problem solving that is used to find and correct issues you're facing. The first step in troubleshooting is gathering information and symptoms to identify the problem. And once the issue is understood, we need to eliminate unnecessary components to define the correct cause. The tricky part here is that sometimes multiple causes lead to the same problem and the other way around. Uh, the same cause can lead to different problems because there is uh, so many variables uh, working with angle grinder. So when we find the correct cause, uh, we are only one step uh, from, from finding solution. And uh, to help you with all of that, uh, we've created a very simple guide, which is available, available at our uh, Weiler EMEA webpage. So you can uh, download it and use it. Uh, because probably most of you, whether you're new to cutting or grinding or not, at some point experienced uh, some results that were not exactly what you were hoping for. And while this can be very frustrating and also time consuming, the main thing is being able to work out why it happened so you don't continue to have the same problem over and over again. And that's why we've put together a troubleshooting guide of the most common problems and also solutions. And uh, today we will slowly go through it together. Uh, we will start with cutting, then we will move to grinding, and we will finish with flap disks. Um, so as already said, uh, we will start with cutting. Uh, most often we hear that cutting disks does not make enough cuts. 
uh, and too many times it is wrongly assumed uh, that the reason for this is bad quality of the product. Uh, but we keep track what is happening on the market. Uh, so we've gathered some most common reasons uh, why cutting disc life can be too short. Uh, first and most common reason is that operator is too strong and uses excessive pressure. And the solution is simple. Cut with less downward pressure and use motion through the cut. Cutting time will be no different, but there will, will be significant difference in the life of a wheel. Uh, the second reason is cutting too deep. There is no need or benefit of, of plunging the, the, deep, uh, the wheel too deep uh, into the workpiece. For cool, clean and fast cut, use only as much wheel as necessary based on the thickness of the material. It's hard to believe what difference we can make with the correct, correct cutting technique. Uh, next two reasons are the wheel is older than three years or was not stored properly because both time and humidity uh, softens the organic bond uh, and uh, there could also be a drop of RPMs, can cause shorter life and this can be fixed uh, with lower pressure or stronger machine. And finally, the product just might not be the right hardness fit for your material or machine. Uh, the very ba ba basic logic here is that if you have a hard material, you need softer wheel. Yeah. Or if you have a soft material, you should use harder wheel. But anyway, there are many more factors, uh, like my colleague Valentina uh, already explained in one of our pre previous webinars, cutting and grinding techniques. Just in case you missed it, you're, you are welcome to watch it. Uh, it's available on our uh, webpage, like uh, Ushka already said at the beginning. Uh, we should eliminate one case by one to find out what really happened. So, for instance, here, we would start with, uh, did we use uh, excessive force? If answer is yes, we try to cut with lower force and see if we eliminated the problem. But if answer is no, we move forward to the next one. So, did we cut too deep? And we continue to do so until we find the cause. And sometimes we may even find out that uh, we need to change or repair the angle grinder. Uh, and like I mentioned in the beginning, one cause can lead to mul multiple problems and uh, excessive, uh, excessive pressure, for instance, is one of them. Uh, it can cause short life of a wheel, like we already said, or can rip out the middle part like we see here on the picture and the solution is uh, lower uh, pressure, or maybe you should uh, use a thicker product, or maybe uh, extra reinforced product like combo wheel, uh, because it resists more side, side pressure. Um, also, we often see this kind of damage when uh, the users move from three millimeter wheel uh, to, for instance, 1.9 millimeter wheel, and they use it the same way. Uh, but thin cutting wheels uh, cut faster and reco require a much lower pressure to cut. Uh, but however, with high pressure, we will not achieve uh, any benefit. We only risk the wheel to twist or, or to break. And one of the reasons for this uh, damage could also be that the workpiece was not properly clamped and it grabbed the wheel. Uh, here on the picture uh, marked with number one, we can see how exactly this happens. Uh, when the piece uh, is cut off, the, the work piece may, may drop slightly and uh, it can pinch the, pinch the wheel. Uh, and this can rip out the middle part, uh, especially uh, when the operator uses very powerful machine. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, in the, if the case, uh, in the case, if the product does get stuck, uh, you should never restart the machine while the wheel is still in the cut line. And like we see on the picture too, in the bottom right corner, uh, we should uh, not use flanges that are not the same sizes because uh, when, uh, when you try to tighten the wheel, you can already damage it uh, here in the middle. Uh, and another thing, uh, if the wheel is not co uh, correctly clamped, uh, it can also da damage the edges uh, like we will see on the next slide. Uh, we covered the correct mounting on our safety webinar, just in case you missed it. 
Uh, but anyway, we can refresh the memory. So on the left bottom picture, picture uh, you can see uh, the orientation of, of, of the outer flange, uh, depending on the shape of the wheel. If the, the wheel is not tightened correctly, it can start to, vib uh, to vibrate and this can damage the edges or at least it's annoying to work with. And like here on the video, uh, we can see the vibrations uh, caused uh, by uh, cutting too far from clamp clamping point, which can also lead to damage, damaged edges. And the further away from the clamp point you work, more significant the vibrations can be. And increased vibrations make it easier for the wheel to bind, uh, can, uh, can also cause the wheel to wear down faster, and if powerful enough, can even cause the wheel to fracture or break. Uh, and on the market, we often see this kind of damage uh, as a result of grinding with cutting disc. And I cannot express this enough, never grind with cutting disc. It's not uh, worth to risk of any kind of injury. And also trying to uh, maintain a 90 degree uh, cutting angle because putting stress on the sides of, of the wheel can ca cause the wheel to break down faster and also damage it. And moving on uh, to a wor worst case uh, results of not maintaining 90 degree cutting angle. Cutting discs are just not designed for high side pressures. So if you must to, to, to grind with cutting disc, use combo wheel, which is designed also for grinding. Um, uh, this damage on the picture could also be a result of incorrect clamping of the workpiece and the vibrations were very strong or the wheel was grabbed by the workpiece as we already saw on the slide with ripped out flange. The workpiece can also grab the wheel when we cut from the bottom to the top, like we see on the picture one. Uh, well, there may be, uh, there is one more, one more mistake that comes to mind uh, to, to resolve the breakage of this kind. And that's that someone forgot to check maximum RPMs on the machine and on the, and on the wheel before work. Or maybe someone used worn out wheel on a smaller machine. Please don't do that. Moving on to burning. Uh, for this one, we can see two symptoms. Burnt edges on the wheel or discoloration of, of the workpiece. Usually it's blue, like on the image 3B. Uh, uh, the causes are usually too hard or too thick product too much pressure or lack uh, of moving through the cut, especially when cutting full materials. And the reason could also be the, that the RPMs were too low. So it's better to use more powerful machines because lower RPMs leads to faster loss of the wheel and less removed material. And on the other hand, higher RPMs uh, cause the wheel to last longer. So now we already earned a short pause. Uh, so I will pass the word back to Urška. Uh, thank you, Doris. So um, we, we will make a short uh, pause. Uh, second, please. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will make a short pause and uh, we would like to encourage you to uh, participate in this uh, giveaway. So uh, the first answer that will be submitted to the chat function, so please be aware to use the chat function, will receive the Weiler HD camera. And the question is, so name at least one solution to the problem on the picture below. So uh, what was the solution that, uh, is, that was provided uh, by Doris. So please put your answers in the chat function and we will allow, uh, announce the winner at the end. So before we move to questions and answers. Uh, okay, thank you. And I move back to Doris. Okay. Uh, we will continue with grinding. Uh, on the picture, we can see the uneven wear of the grinding wheel. Uh, and the first thing we need to check here is mounting. Is there maybe any dirt on the flange? Or are the flanges worn out? If yes, replace them. Check also if the flanges are, are the same sizes uh, and if the wheel was correctly clamped. 
uh, if everything is okay, we can move on to un unbalance and run out. And let's remember what these two mean. That the unbalance, that means uh, how much the product is heavier on one side than on the other. And the run out, uh, if we have the product spinning, it's not rotating exactly in uh, the, the line with main axis. So I will show you what this means. So if we have the product spinning like this, we measure how much it moves in this direction. Okay, and the easiest way to check this is with uh, change of the machine. So it, when you change the machine, if you still have the same problem, then it's probably the wheel's fault. If not, you should replace or repair the machine. Um, the standard, for instance, clearly defines the limit for both uh, unbalance and the runout. But if you grind at too low angle, the wheel can start to vibrate uh, even inside these limits. So on the bottom right uh, picture, uh, we see the correct optimal uh, choice of an angle and too low angle. So let's remember um, the right angle for grinding with bonded grinding discs is between 25 and 35 degrees. So the next thing, what to do if the grinding wheel is using too fast? So it just might be too soft uh, for the material or maybe not the correct choice. Again, if we press too hard, the disc will only produce more heat, which will cause the, the wheel to wear out faster. Too much pressure can also cause drop of RPMs uh, and also this leads to higher consumption of the wheel. We can try to grind slowly uh, because slower grinding will result in less loss of a wheel, longer life, and also higher grinding factor. And the same will happen if we make long movements when grinding because we will produce less heat. And of course, you should check uh, expiry date the, because the older the wheel is, the softer it will be and the consumption will be higher. Uh, because it's hard to believe, but sometimes we can also find uh, 10 years uh, old products on the market. So, when we run to uneven edge wear or a little pieces st uh, start to fly off, uh, the reason one could be applying too much pressure. By pushing too hard on the abrasive, the product produces more heat and this leads to the breakage and of course also faster consumption of the wheel. Uh, and remember, the optimal pressure is different due to different uh, grains the wheel is made of. If you use the product with aluminum oxide or ceramic grains, do not use pressure. Let the tool do the work. But if you use zirconia wheels, you can use slight pressure. The reason too could be incorrect angle. Keep in mind that with the prescribed angle, you, would, you will not only prevent problems like this, but you will also achieve optimal results uh, because when you start grinding with proper angle, the edge of the wheel is in contact with the surface and abrasive grain is exposed and can start removing material immediately, which cannot happen when grinding angle is too low because the wheel cannot start working from the beginning due to bottom surface is covered uh, with the reinforcement, which is made from fiberglass and resin, and this is not cutting. So we have to use bottom reinforcement before the product can really start to work. So if we look at the next damage, uh, we can see some big cracks on the wheel. The reason one might be that the wheel is too hard and you should choose the softer one, or the other reason may be that the wheel dropped at some point. In any case, get rid of the, the wheel like this. Don't use it because, because it can be dangerous. So when you see material stick on the products, you should consider using a product designed for grinding of non-ferrous materials and alloys. Aluminum, for instance, has low melting point and that's why it clogged the pores of the wheel and the wheel will stop working. But this is not the, wor the worst thing that can happen. If you use wheel on the aluminum first and then on something rusty, this all together will form thermate, which is very flammable. So with that said, before, before we move on to the flap disks, uh, I would like to raise a question. 
but keep in mind that there is no not no right or wrong answer but i would kindly ask you to join so uh, uh, how would you like to stay in touch with weiler our uh, visits uh, webinars uh, social media uh, and you can also choose as many answers as you see fit okay i think we should continue uh, so now we will move on to the last chapter of this webinar, flap disks. When we see damaged edges, we should reduce grinding angle and also pressure, or uh, consider a change uh, to conical shape. On the right side, uh, here you can see different shapes and recommended angles. So the contact surface between the workpiece and the wheel is the greatest. On the bottom right picture, we can see a very difficult area to grind, like for instance, uh, fillet welds and T-joints. And Weiler uh, angled flap discs uh, are designed to use the curved uh, flaps to efficiently grind this surface without damaging the abrasive discs. The flaps are wrapped uh, around the edge of the backing plate, and this allows the best contact between uh, flaps and uh, metal in this difficult area. And uh, if we reduce, re reduce grinding angle or change the shape of the wheel, uh, we will also solve uh, excess edge of the uh, excess uh, edge wear, uh, which we see here on uh, this picture. Uh, flap discs uh, are designed uh, that the full surface of the flap is used for optimum performance. So if the grinding angle is not optimal, the operator and the discs are working too hard because they're not used, uh, using uh, the full uh, grinding surface. And this reduces the product's life because it puts increased stress on the flaps. And the sad part here is, is that when the edge of the flaps uh, wears prematurely, an operator will usually discard, discard the discs. Uh, which means throwing away much of the disc's abrasive uh, material and also value. Uh, th this issue, issue is most common for user, user, users <laughs> grinding at higher angles while using for, uh, type 27 discs. Many times simply switching to type 29 conical discs allow the, allow the full surface of the flap to be used during the grinding operations and this ma maximizes the efficiency. Uh, moving on to burning, uh, we already saw burning while working with bonded wheels, uh, and very similar can happen with coated discs. Regarding pressure, this one is a little bit tricky, uh, because we can reduce the pressure to reduce the heat, or sometimes we can increase the pressure, allowing uh, used grains to be expelled and fresh, sharp grains to be exposed. But remember, applying more pressure will not uh, increase the aggressiveness of the wheel. So this just might be an indicator to use the, use the disc with coarser grain. And that's why you should choose the wheel wisely. The goal is to find the flap discs that meets the requ requirements of the application and desired time frame and also the budget. And the correct choice of the material and the correct techniques can save a lot of money and also a lot of time. They, they can eliminate the problems we saw today and most important, eliminates chance for injuries. So we reached the end of this webinar. So just quick wrap, wrap up before I pass the word back to Urshka. You can find troubleshooting guide on our EMEA webpage under the literature, so you can download it and use it. Uh, it will help you to identify the problem, what are the most uh, probable causes and solutions. And with that said, we are done here. So back to Urshka. Do we have any questions? Uh, thank you, Doris, for a very interesting presentations. Uh, so before we jump to questions and answers, I would like to announce the winner of the giveaway. Uh, and the winner is Mr. Tomasz Zimlak. So I congratulate you. I hope you will have uh, a lot of good moments with uh, um, shooting the, um, some scenes with HD uh, camera. If you, uh, we invite you to also uh, do some uh, videos with our product. You can send them uh, to us. It's very welcome. 
uh, we will get in contact with you regarding the shipment uh, details and uh, I would like to thank everyone else for participating. So now let's see if we have any questions. Uh, we received few. Um, so the ones that will not be answered, we will follow, uh, follow up with each of you via email. Uh, I would like to answer the first one, which is, uh, so can we send you the recording? Uh, I would like to say that uh, we are recording the webinar and it will be published on our uh, web page. So with the follow up uh, email, you will receive a link uh, to that page so uh, you can download it uh, freely and it's also uh, published on our youtube channel uh, so and the next question is uh, for doris so if, if troubleshooting is troubleshooting guide available also in other languages uh Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, we did prepare it, uh, I think, in 10 or 9, nine, nine languages. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. Uh, all of them are, are available on our website. So you are uh, welcome to download it and also use it and also send it to your customers. Okay, and the next question. So how do I know that uh, I have the right product for my work? Uh, for instance, you can help yourself with our selection guide. Uh, you can also find this one on our uh, website. Uh, it's designed to lead you uh, to the optimal product uh, based on the machine you have uh, uh, and based on the material you are going to, to cut. Uh, and you can also uh, check our previous webinars uh, and uh, the Weiler team is also always here for you with the trainings and to, with answers to all of your questions. Okay, and uh, we will finish with the last question. So uh, there was a lot of dusting while cutting. What is the problem? Well, if there was a lot of dusting, the consumption of the wheel uh, is usually high as well. So uh, for that, uh, like we saw on the first slide, uh, it could be high pressure, it could be that the product is too old, uh, or maybe it was not the right choice of the product. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Doris, for answering the questions. So the ones that were not answered, as I mentioned, we will send you follow-ups in your emails. Uh, I thank you again all for participating. Welcome to join us uh, also next Wednesday when we will talk about brushes. I wish you a good day and uh, goodbye. Bye.